In this video I'm going to show you how you can read the temperature, the humidity and the pressure with a BME280 sensor. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi of course, uh, Pi4J and Gbang to do all this. You can find all this information on the Pi4J website, I'll show you. So uh, here on the website you have a section with example impl implementations and there is a new section here which is the Gbang examples. Now, uh, first it will show you how you can use Gbang. Gbang is a tool that enables you to run Java applications without the need to use uh, Maven or Gradle. So just a simple file in which you define the dependencies for your project uh, will allow you to run and execute this single file application. So we're gonna do uh, that. We're gonna use Gbang and we're gonna execute some code within a single file to uh, control a BME280 uh, sensor. Now the BME280 uh, is a sensor produced by Bosch. It's a very small, I'm gonna try to show you uh, if I go close enough. It's in the middle of this board. It's this very small, where is it? It's this very small square thing you see here. That's actually uh, the sensor. So it's two and a half millimeters in size. In the data sheet of this sensor that you can find on the Bosch website, you can find a list of uh, different applications and devices where it can be used. So they have a full list of monitoring tools and Internet of Things, navigation systems, gaming. So they have a lot of use cases uh, for the sensor. And the fact that it's very uh, useful for testing in our case is that it can be controlled uh, both by I2C and SPI. Uh, let's see what this is mentioned. So the sensor provides both SPI and I2C interfaces uh, and it can work on the 3 v 3 that we have on the Raspberry Pi. So it's a very useful tool for experiments. Let's see. Uh, so this is all documented here. This uh, data sheet is quite extensive and it has a lot of information. So it also talks about what interfaces you have. So it can be controlled with I2C, it can be controlled by uh, SPI. Now in this data sheet, uh, we can also find it's page 49. So the data sheet also gives you a few uh, code examples, not in Java, unfortunately, but it shows you how you can read the values, um, how you can uh, use the values provided by the sensor uh, and get into a uh, return a temperature or the pressure or the humidity. And that's exactly the same kind of code that we will be, use, uh, will be using in this uh, example. To me, as a software developer, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with, with, with uh, electronics. It's a bit strange that you need these complex calculations to get from the values provided by the sensor uh, to the pressure or, or the temperature. And I asked uh, Bosch on the forum, um, can you explain me how this works? What's the internal structure of such a sensor? Um, and, and, and how you actually get such a tiny device of only a few millimeters to return all this. Uh, but unfortunately, they are just referring back um, to the data sheet. And they also have a, a GitHub account where they provide more example implementation. So they don't really want to dive into uh, an explanation of, of how this is uh, needs to be used. Um, but if you go into that GitHub project, uh, there you see indeed the same kind of code that we found, found back in the, in the data sheet. And it is a good base to understand how they actually read out the values and, and calculate them. Now, um, the sensor is very small, uh, so you can probably buy them just a sensor and try to get it working. But of course, there are a lot of alternatives uh, by providers, by companies who use this sensor and build experimentation boards for them. So for instance, Adafruit, and that's the one I'm using, they have this very small board. You've seen it. Uh, so it's this very small board. That's the one. Um, they have it again with I2C and SPI. Uh, so they have soldered it on a small board uh, and you have this uh, connection for a breadboard. You also have another type of connector, but there's also one provided by SparkFun. So again, the same sensor. 
and here they have separate connections uh, for uh, SPI and I2C. Uh, very easy to test. You see the prices. Um, so other fruit is a bit cheaper. Depends where you buy them and uh, if you have import taxes or not. Let's see how we can read out the values with Java code. And actually, um, go back to the website. Uh, you can see here uh, on the on the website we also have community implementation. So actually, this is a project by Tom Arts. He's one of the main contributors to the Py4j project at this moment because he's creating a lot of examples, and one of them is is already described here. He created an example with a BMP 280 sensor, which is actually almost the same, uh, but it doesn't return the humidity. So it's only a temperature and pressure sensor. And he created a traditional Maven project and this documentation page where he also describes how to read out the values uh, from the sensor. And he's using I2C in this uh, example. So uh, there's some code example here. So if you go to the code Java devices, uh, you see that he has a lot of different uh, devices for which he has created uh, example applications. And this uh, temperature value is, is one of them. So here you have the uh, BME and the BMP. So he has created these two examples uh, in here, but this is a full Maven application. So that means that uh, you need some more uh, getting started steps to get this running uh, in IntelliJ or build your project and then run it uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And what we want to achieve is just one single file and execute the application. So based on this uh, existing code, um, I created a Gbang example with the assistance of Tom uh, to also add the humidity. So this is also documented on the Py4j website. If we go to the BME280 sensor here uh, within the Gbang examples, you have a full step-by-step uh, -step on how to uh, interact with this device. Now, to be sure that you can use uh, I2C and SPI on the Raspberry Pi, you will need to enable them. Uh, they're not always enabled by default, depends on the operating system version that you're using. Uh, but if you go to sudo raspiconfig uh, and to the interface options, there you can activate I2C and SPI. Of course, we'll need to connect this uh, board to the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to start with the I2C example. Um, here on the website, you have an overview of the connections that we need. But there's also a wiring diagram. And once it is connected, uh, it looks like this. One tip, always power down your Raspberry Pi before you make the connections. Um, just to make sure that you're not uh, damaging the Raspberry Pi uh, and then start it up uh, when all the connections are there and you double checked that you made the right connections. Now, uh, after a Raspberry Pi has started and you made the I2C connection, you can check it uh, within the terminal if the I2C device is found. If you do that with I2C detect minus uh, Y1, um, that means uh, disable interactive mode, just show me the result of the I2C detect. Uh, and the one is the I2C bus one that we're going to use for this example. You should see on uh, 77, the hex value 77, that a device is found. Now this is this uh, BME280 sensor or this port. If you want to do this with SPI, which is an other communication protocol, you need a few more wires. But actually, um, the code you will see later is exactly the same. Again, on the website, you have a wiring diagram. You see there are a few more wires being connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, once you've set up this wiring, uh, it should look like this. In this video, I'm not going to show you the full code because you can just get it from uh, GitHub. I'm just going to highlight uh, the most important parts, just like they are described on the Pi4j website page. So what is important for Gbang 
is that your Java file starts with this extra line on top. This is the first line and it tells Gbang to handle this uh, file as a script and uh, execute it as Java code, compile it when needed, get the dependencies. Now, um, because we're using Py4j library, we need to add the dependencies in our project. Normally in a Maven project, you would do this in the pom file or in the Gradle configuration file. Here we do this in one single file and we do this with the Gradle style and we start with slash slash depths, and then the group, the artifact and uh, the version. And we do this for all the dependencies that we need for this uh, specific uh, example. So for I square C, that means we need uh, SLF4G, the API and the simple uh, library. And then for on Py4J, the core, plugin for the Raspberry Pi and the plugin for Linux FS. So these are the libraries used for I square C. For SPI, they are a bit different uh, what uh, Py4J uh, matters. Then it's just Java code. So we need the imports, all the imports that we need for our example and then uh, the code. Now, if you look into uh, the code itself, uh, the main method uh, is uh, almost the same for I square C and SPI. So the main difference is that we, uh, for the I square C, need to define the bus and the address. Here we find back the 77 that we just uh, have seen with I square C detect. We configure our I square C uh, device initialize it and then we can uh, have a loop. So this is the example, it's a loop of 10 times reading the values of the sensor. First, we need to reset it, that uh, we get the right measurements. We sleep for a short time and then we actually uh, ask for the measurements and output the results and we do this 10 times. So the main method for the SPI example is almost the same. It is the same for uh, the loop but it is a bit different for the configuration where we uh, initialize uh, the SPI instead of I square C. <clears throat> now reading out the values is actually reading a, a buffer. We need some bytes from the device and then use these values in this byte array um, to do calculations. Now the calculations and how they are done is just a Java translation of the example uh, C code that we have uh, seen before. And this is the code that Tom Ars has created. Um, so this is uh, the example code uh, for the temperature. So uh, first we need uh, a long value based on some of these buffer values and then different calculations are done uh, again with other values read from, from the device. Please check the source code where you have all the calculations also for the pressure and the humidity. Now uh, running the application uh, is a bit different um, depending on the protocol that you're using. I square C can be executed without sudo. So on Raspberry Pi OS, uh, all the I square C functions are available uh, without sudo. So you can just execute Gbang um, and then the Java file, which has the code for the interaction with the I square C sensor. If you run this for the first time on your Raspberry Pi, you will see that it resolves the dependency. So it will get the dependencies from the Maven library, uh, will build the jar and then execute the application. Uh, I have run it uh, already a few times on my Raspberry Pi. So you see um, it just immediately starts uh, it doesn't need to build a full jar anymore or get the dependencies. It just starts the application. And then you have the loop of 10 times getting the values from the sensor and outputting them uh, in the terminal. The SPI application is a bit different. Um, it has some interaction with the GPIOs using the Py GPIO library. That's um, a native library inside, Py, uh, inside Py4j that is really interacting uh, with the sensors, uh, with the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi, sorry. Um, so uh, this needs to be executed with sudo. Um, and we can do this in one line uh, and get Gbang to interact again with our uh, application. Uh, if we use sudo with Gbang within uh, accents and uh, the file that we have stored with our application or a code. 
Again, first time uh, when you do this, uh, it will resolve the dependencies, build the jar and then execute uh, the application. Or if you've done this before, it will just start and run it. Now to test this, I've put my finger on top of the sensor. You have to be a bit careful that you do not uh, shortcut any uh, connections there, but uh, it will show you that the value rises a bit um, from the heat of your uh, finger. Now that's it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. Of course, there's a lot more to learn about this uh, subject. You can find all the information on the Pi4j website, on the various pages that we have created there. So there's one page uh, that really uh, tells you more about Gbang, uh, how you can prepare a Raspberry Pi with Gbang um, and how you install it and then how you can run some example applications. And also there's a Git project, a GitHub project uh, with all the examples that we are creating within the Pi4j uh, project that you can run with Gbang. Uh, we hope to add a lot more uh, in the future. The BME280 uh, sensor is a really a nice and uh, affordable component if you want to experiment with both uh, I2C and SPI. So it will enable you to learn how to use these two different types of communication uh, with an uh, electronic component. Um, have fun with it, uh, experiment, let us know how things are going um, and subscribe to my channel if you want more, uh, know more about Java on Raspberry Pi and other stuff in the Java world.